From Pride in the Park to some beautiful flowers in bloom, Wegmans and the Western New York Rose Society hosting a fairy festival and rose show at the Botanical Gardens. Now this gives adults the opportunity to see a wide variety of roses and ask experts for some advice on how to take them home. Now for the kids, it's a chance to dress up and learn a wide variety about things in nature. It's awesome to get the kids involved in the community. The kids come into the gardens, they get to explore, they get to learn about things. Um, our education team works with volunteers. They get to learn about pollinators, why our gardens grow. Um, and it's just a really great opportunity to, to gather everybody together. I saw a four-leaf clover, but then she, but then she said go over and then I lost it. Oh my gosh, those are pretty easy to lose, huh? <laughs> How adorable, looks like so much fun, plus the amazing costumes. Now today's Fairy Festival, also part of Wegman's Day of Play program for the kids. All right, a cloudy end to the weekend here in Western New York, but the rain holding off for now. We'll check in now with meteorologist Josh Nichols, tracking your seven weather forecast. Hey, Josh. Hey there, Taylor. Yeah, those roses are really going to be excited uh, about the drink of water that they're about to receive. Showers on our doorstep right now. They should be here within a few hours, and we have several hours of showers to deal with, especially for the first part of Monday. We will see some dry time, especially on Tuesday, but more showers wait in the wings. Want to let you know that this rain is also going to help to cleanse the air. We actually still have an air quality alert in play for moderate levels of uh, pollution right now. We're in that yellow zone. We're going to be squarely in the good zone for tomorrow, but we do have those air quality alerts till midnight uh, tonight. Still a little bit of leftover fire, uh, wildfire smoke. 73 degrees right now with a northeast wind and the clouds are thickening and lowering. We're at 75 in Olean, 71 in the falls, 69 in Newfane, and it's about a degree warmer than it was at this time yesterday. All right, where is the rain, you ask? It is not that far off. There are a couple spotty showers here showing up on Super Doppler, uh, mainly from the falls west into uh, parts of Ontario, but look at this. This is the nicest thing that we've seen on radar in a long time. An area-wide rain that stretches from Pittsburgh all the way up to Saginaw, Michigan. And all of this has its sights set on western New York. I think it's here by about 9 o'clock, maybe 10 o'clock this evening. We'll be dodging those raindrops and uh, temperatures will be dropping into the 60s. And yes, for your day tomorrow, for Monday, you need to have the umbrella handy as you head out the door. Might be some dry time later in the afternoon, but look at these temperatures pretty low. I'll let you know uh, how much more rain we'll see and uh, when it'll warm up in the Super 7 Day forecast in just a bit. Taylor? Alrighty, Josh, thank you. Now to the Philadelphia area where a tanker truck on fire underneath an overpass has caused a section of Interstate 95 to collapse. The incident now considered a hazmat situation and the busy highway will likely be closed for quite some time. Here's ABC's M1 with more on what happened here. Multiple lanes of Interstate 95 northbound in Philadelphia collapsed after a tanker truck fire erupted underneath an overpass. The northbound side of I-95 has completely collapsed and the southbound side is not structurally sound to carry any traffic over it. Emergency dispatchers received a call for an accident on the off-ramp of I-95 at 6.22 a.m. Sunday morning. And is there any underpass? Something is... Uh, ignited. Give me two more engines. Large plumes of thick black smoke could be seen hanging over the highway. The fire department says crews have extinguished the fire, but explosions could be heard in the area. Those are uh, the runoff of uh, maybe some fuel or gas lines that could have been compromised by the accident. Okay, so that's what you hear in. Multiple agencies are now involved in the response, with some expressing concern over the runoff due to the proximity of the Delaware River. The incident upgraded to a hazmat situation. Oh my God, the road's fallen. ER nurse Lisa Taormino says she could feel the overpass begin to slump as she drove over it on her way to work. That was like a sinkhole. It felt like like if you were driving and you hit a really big pothole and the whole entire road just sunk down probably a good six to 12 inches. And I was hoping that the car would come back up the other side. Once she learned of the collapse, she says she was grateful to be safe, but frustrated with the response. It probably should have been closed before I ever went over top of it. Officials did not say how long the closure could last, but urged motorists to plan alternative travel routes. M1, ABC News, Washington. Yeah, scary stuff out of Philly, M. Thank you so much. Well, up next, a local waitress marking a major milestone as she gets ready for her next course. That story on 7 News at 6 continues. It is 610. You're watching 7 News at 6. Stick with us.
You are watching 7 News with Taylor Epps, 7 Weather Meteorologist Josh Nichols, and Sports with Dom Tibbetts. Welcome back, everybody. We'll take you out to Hawaii, where the, nation, the state's second biggest volcano is putting on quite the show out there. Take a look at Kilauea, which is one of the most active volcanoes in the world, continued to erupt overnight, shooting waves of molten lava from its crater. The volcano on Hawaii's Big Island began erupting on Wednesday after a three-month pause. This is located in a closed area of Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Right now, no towns or villages are threatened by the river of molten lava. Well, good food and great service is no accident, and it's what brings you back again and again to your favorite restaurant. Our Mike Randall introduces us to a waitress who knows all about great service, and she's celebrating a special milestone. If anyone knows what it takes to be a great waitress, it's Jackie Kaboot. Good sneakers. Good sneakers. I go through two pair a year. Jackie's been working at Hoax Lakeshore Restaurant since high school. I started out washing dishes. My aunt was working here at the time and asked me if I wanted a job. That was 45 years ago, and she quickly graduated from dishwasher to waitress. You know, my very first table, I remember distinctly. Waited on them, served them. Great. She asked for a cup of coffee. Hands were flying in the air. Coffee went all over. I was the most incompetent waitress I've ever seen. I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing and still here today. So. In more than four decades of taking care of customers, Jackie's learned a lot. Can I do a fish sandwich, please? Soft roll or rye bread? Rye bread. Fries, potato salad, chips, or coleslaw? Lately, I have been saying with every all the ex different experiences, I should have written a book. I should have written a book. She knows that waiting tables take special qualities. I think you need to be a people person. I think you need to have some rapport with your customers. 45 years on her feet, Jackie's getting ready to hang up those sneakers. You're going to give up all this? Yes. <laughs> yes, to travel with my husband. What she brings to this popular spot is irreplaceable. She says she'll miss some of her regulars. Some. We all have a following. There are some that are wonderful tippers. There's some that aren't, but that's okay. Her boss, Kevin Hoke, who wasn't even born yet when Jackie started working here, will miss her. It's, it's not going to be the same without Jackie around because she's been here forever. Uh, great employee, great worker, so dedicated, very loyal. It's, she's going to be missed. This month is actually Jackie's 45th anniversary, but she's probably going to be around at least until October, maybe November. So you still have a chance to stop in to hoax and wish Jackie happy trails. And congrats on her 45 years. I just, I just love what I do. I love being with the people. Mike Randall, 7 News, Hamburg. Well, a big congratulations to Jackie and not to rain on her parade, but it is time now for a check-in on the weather. Our meteorologist Josh Nichols is letting us know when we can finally see that rain, Josh. Yeah, it's been three weeks, a long time coming, but finally we're getting in on some measurable rain, one of the longest spells without measurable rain in Buffalo weather history, among the top uh, 10, in fact. Made it up to 79 today. Nice to hold off that rain, though, for Allentown Art Festival and all the other activities that were taking place. As we go into tomorrow, look at these temperatures. Remember, <laughs> we're getting into the middle of June here. Normal highs are in the mid-70s. We're not out of the mid-60s for tomorrow, and we will be dodging raindrops, especially through the first part of the day. I don't think it's going to be a complete washout, but you'll note here is we look at the rain chances from tonight into tomorrow. We've got a happy puddle duck here in the morning. He's going to be uh, marching through some uh, puddles as rain chances will be just about as high as they've been for a long time, 80 to 90 percent. So that's the time for him to watch, I think, for the best likelihood of seeing some of that rain. And note that the chances really drop off tomorrow afternoon, so the activity will be more isolated in nature. So there will be some dry time later in the day. It'd be nice to have an all-day washout uh, for the lawns, the gardens, and the farm fields, but not so much today. Note that uh, by later on, close to lunchtime tomorrow, some spots will be picking up on close to an inch of rain, and then more waves of wetness move through western New York into Wednesday, and that could leave us with a couple of inches of rain in total as low pressure continues to meander here in the upper levels of the atmosphere, and little disturbances kind of pinwheel around that feature to give us this unsettled weather story. It will dry out later into the week. 73 right now, cloudy. The breeze is coming in out of the northeast, and the overcast will be lowering more and more here in the next couple of 
of hours, there is that proverbial wall of water back to our west. It is raining now in northeast Ohio very lightly. All of this, like I said, has its sights set on western New York. Should be here, I'd say, by 9 o'clock tonight here downtown. And it will rain for a little bit. Then we'll get a break. And then tomorrow morning for that commute, you definitely want to make sure that the windshield wipers are good to go. Definitely want to make sure that you have the rain gear with you before you head out. I think by lunchtime, we'll start to dry out in Buffalo. We might even see a few sneak peeks of sun late day. Temperatures, though, will be very low for this time of year. Like I said, only into the mid 60s. I think it dries out nice on Tuesday, I think we'll see some sunshine and the air will be cleansed. We are under air quality alerts right now. That rain will help really to wash out the atmosphere and we'll be in a lot better shape uh, for tomorrow on the air quality department and getting some rain. So it's a win win tonight. Cloudy showers late. The low temperature 62 showers for you in Lockport for tomorrow. We're at 65 uh, 70 should do it in Grand Island. Again, most of the rain early in the day. Some dry time later into the afternoon. We're at 64 in West Seneca and we make it up to 61 in Salamanca with some showers. Have a check of that super seven day forecast. Again, normal highs are in the mid 70s. We're going to be nowhere near that for some time to come and dealing with, like I said, these waves of wetness moving through western New York all the way pretty much through Thursday, maybe even a thunderstorm in the mix. And then by the end of the week and into the weekend, guess good timing there. The sunshine returns and temperatures are into the mid 70s. Very comfortable. Maybe get that round of golf in. If you have a morning tea time schedule for tomorrow, maybe push it to later in the afternoon. afternoon kind can. of thing. Yeah. It's been a long time since we've seen our friend Puddle Ducky. He's, he, we had to uh, bring him out of the, the room where he lives. I think we're excited to see that guy. <laughs> I'm a big right? fan of Puddle Ducky. Puddle Ducky's <laughs> also going to be a big fan if he really likes the rain when it comes to Bill's mandatory mini camp coming up in the middle part of this week. We got some showers coming in, but the storyline's very plentiful out of one Bill's drive. We'll talk about that and more coming up after the break, so don't go anywhere. You're watching 7 News at 6.